Hi, in this chapter, we are going to study spring-loaded inverted pendulum model called SLEEP model. The SLEEP model as a part of dynamics of locomotion. Um, we know that the dynamics of human motions are very complicated and then it, all the sensory feedbacks are all involved in a complicated system, physiological system. However, uh, if we focus on the point mass or if we can reduce the order of the system, we might be able to describe some specific characteristics using the dynamics only. So that's the uh, main message for chapter two. So to describe the uh, repeated motions like a locomotion, walking and running, we reviewed how are the um, solution steps or solution methodology involved for that. And using a very simple inverted pendulum, we described like a rimless wheel or simply bipedal model. We described how the repeated gait could be obtained and interpreted in terms of uh, stability and energetics. So for chapter 2.3, we are going to now introduce a new model parameter, which is spring. And then how those spring and mass systems are uh, be able to um, represent the locomotions like a walking and running. And we are going to go over brief introductions and solution steps like equations of motion and so on, and then how human data uh, are compatible to those uh, model predictions. Okay, so when I learned locomotion for when uh, I was a grad student, I learned the walking and runnings of two different mechanisms, like uh, at the mid stand. The walking has a maximum height for the center of mass, like this. And for running, due to the uh, bent knee, uh, center of mass are at the minimum position during the mid stance. So it seems like a two very different mechanisms. So walkings are described by ballistic walking of inverted pendulum. So it goes up, rotationally go up and down and keep falling falling of the inverted pendulum whereas the running which has a, a significant reduction of the leg length um, is described by the spring so that the spring initially of uh, maybe um, natural length has been compressed in the middle and that uh, and then um, extended back uh, when it takes up so um, the model simulated uh, contact force, ground reaction forces are look like uh, some uh, portion of gravity here for, for inverted pendulum, like a sine and cosine. Uh, of, of course, including some um, motion in uh, motion effect, like a centripetal acceleration. And for the spring, starting from zero, indicating um, touching the ground with the um, natural length, and that it's been compressed a lot in the middle, and that it, again, it's released back and turns out to be zero uh, spring force and it take, takes up, um, occurs. For experimental data shows a little bit of different trends for the walking. So for the walking, the, the ground reaction force starts from zero. And instead of having this uh, smooth, um, like uh, upward curves, it has a sort of double humps. So we call it as M, M shape, M shape vertical ground reaction force. And for the horizontal reaction force, it's going to be something like a minus force and the positive, something like sinusoid. And for the running, uh, there's only a single hump like called U-shaped vertical ground reaction force. And similar to the walking, there's a minus and followed by the plus directional horizontal, uh, AP directional forces. So those discrepancy can be explained by the sim model simplicity because we know that human walkings are very like a multiple segments and pretty complicated sensor feedback motion. But point mass passive inverted pendulum, you know, it's a too simple uh, model simplification may induce those differences. However, about mid-2000, there was a research group, Kyer and Seyfarth, proposed that maybe instead of completely splitting out the walking mechanism and running mechanism as a rigid versus the, the compliance, maybe walking could be also described by the spring leg, compliant leg. So could be possibly demonstrated by the um, compliance for walking and running, and that was that became a big um, um, insight about understanding walking and running using spring mechanics. And nowadays, slip uh, is serving as one of the popular theoretical concept framework to understand the mechanics for locomotion. 
and it makes sense. Like, you know, walking and running as you walk faster and faster, you actually make a transition from walking and running. So could possibly under our same, same mechanical family, right? So that's what I'm going to talk about in chapter 2.3. To go further, I'd like to emphasize again that the human walking involves, you know, multiple joints in three dimension and the sensory, multiple sensory um, informations are integrated and the feedback controls are applying joint works by activating each complicated multiple redundant muscles at the lower limbs, right? So by those uh, joint activation, there is a force is applied to the ground, the only um, environmental contact here. And as a, re as a reaction, there is a ground reaction force is applied. This only direct uh, measurable data set for, for, for walking. So in, as a, uh, for the very uh, complicated um, uh, actual physiological act, um, controlled behavior, this is the only um, measure through the uh, from the environment so it's, even though it's a really complicated system once we just focusing on the point mass the resultant uh, of the whole complicated uh, mechanics we could demonstrate it as a mechanics dominant behavior like a passive uh, bipedal walking okay and for for again if we sort of switch this rigid leg as a spring leg we might be able to describe some qualitative representation for the ground reaction force so simple a model again help us to get a concept about what's really important in the mechanics for the walking but again we should keep that in mind those representation not necessarily directly implicate how real human does okay Okay, for the next slides, we are going to talk about how we can do the analysis for the SLIM model.